YouTube, what's going on? As you saw from the title of this video, today I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to enlighten you on my editing process in Premiere Pro. Now, this tutorial is gonna be more on the basic side. I'm gonna save the advanced editing tips, tricks, techniques for a separate video. So what I've done is recorded a bunch of clips of this helmet that Casey gave me. Now, think of this as a sort of hands-on video. All of the clips are shot already, and what you're gonna see now is my editing process with me explaining to you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm making these decisions. I hope you learn a lot from this video, and please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be checking them out. Enjoy. So, the first thing you wanna do when starting to edit a project is grab your footage off of the memory card. And whenever I start a new project, I make a new folder on the desktop and name it whatever the video is gonna be about. In this case, it's how to edit video in Premiere. And then you wanna go ahead and grab the footage and drag it into that folder that you just created. Once the files are copied over, open up Premiere. And the reason why I use Premiere is just personal preference. That's about it. Do you like still or sparkling water? It's the same kind of thing. Premiere works for me. So once Premiere is open, go ahead and click new project and then title it something similar to what the folder is called, or it could be the same name. It doesn't really matter. And you want to make sure you hit browse and point this project to go into the same folder that you just created before. So this folder contains all of your video footage as well as the project file. All right, this is Premiere and because we are editing a video up top, I'm gonna click the edit tab. The first thing I always do when I start a new project is right click in the lower left hand box down there and click import. And I'm going to select all of my files that are in that folder. Make sure you don't select the project, just the video files. And once I've got all my files, I'll drag one of the video clips in. In this case, it doesn't matter which one because they're all the same frame rate and resolution. And what dragging it over does, this creates a timeline based on the video settings that I shot at. It's very useful. And if you really want to, you can rename your sequence so you're not confused. I usually don't do this, but this is, you could do it. There are, I guess, two main ways to edit in Premiere. You can use the top left as like a preview. So you double click a file, it opens up in the preview, and then you can use I on your keyboard. You tap the I key, which stands for in, and then you let the clip play. And when you want to cut, you tap O and that's out in and out, I and O, very simple. And what you can do is drag that clip from the top left into your timeline. That's sort of one way. What I'll usually do though is I prefer editing in the timeline itself. So I'll just start dragging clips from the little bin on the bottom left into the sequence and just start chopping. And just a quick pro tip, double clicking on the left there widens the audio and video layers so you can kind of see what you're doing better. And I've muted the audio from this recording so you don't have to hear my voice like back and forth and back and forth. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm chopping out all of the dead air. Like when I record videos, I stop and think, I recite lines multiple times. So I'm basically just dragging in footage and then going through and seeing what I wanna keep deleting the dead air, and just continuing the process. And like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to keep this initial premiere video pretty basic, but I wanted to share with you one of my favorite editing techniques. I don't really know what you call this, but uh, my friend Chris Hall told me about J cut. So what I'll do is click a video file in the timeline and then on the keyboard press Command L. And what that does is separates the audio from the video so I can pull back some of the audio of the first clip and then I can bring in some of the audio from the next clip and kind of like merge them. So it kind of plays a trick on your eyes. You actually hear what I'm saying before you see it. I'm a huge fan of this technique. Now that the intro is all cut up, I'm gonna tell you another quick technique that I use every time I edit. Plus and minus on the keyboard will let you zoom in and out. So hitting plus a bunch of times will eventually let you edit frame by frame. And when I'm done editing a batch of clips, I'll click minus and then it's easier to just play it back like that. So now I'm gonna edit the helmet hands-on. What I did is recorded me talking to the camera for like two minutes about the helmet. 
and I also recorded B-roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of the sort of dead air, the mess ups, have one clean talking to the camera set of clips, and then go back and find applicable B-roll. And I like to use multiple levels of videos. I will leave a video clip on top of another one. Technically, yes, if you layer two videos, there are two videos in there. You can delete the main video footage and just put your B-roll on there instead. I aesthetically like to see kind of where the B-roll is and not have it all nice and neat on the same line. And for those wondering, I am using the default Premiere hotkeys. I and O and Command L and the plus and minus, those things will work. So editing that intro and then the helmet sequence took me about 25 minutes. And now I'm gonna play back for you what I created. So when I first got my hands on the helmet, I went to put it on and it didn't fit on my head and I was confused. And I was looking around, obviously super shiny. The helmet is dope. This thing speaks for itself. But I was like, okay, it's, it doesn't fit on my head. And then I realized there are these clips on the side that you can pop off the side when you press them in. And then I took off the goggles and I figured out, okay, so this helmet goes on like this first. And then this mask front part thing that makes me look like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Get over sort of just clicks in like that on the sides here. And once the helmet is on, I mean, look at this thing. It is, it is dope. And then you put the goggles on and you literally become, I mean, what? A Daft Punk member? I mean, seriously, look at this. It is so, so crazy. And I also find the clip to be very, very easy to do. I'm not sure how safe that is. I've tugged on it and it's totally fine. It just kind of sort of slides off like that. I've never seen a clip like that before. But yeah, take a look at this thing. Super shiny. It is like extremely, extremely, it is It is a, a mirror, quite literally a mirror. It's got air vents on the sides as well as the top. And then like I said, this sort of front mouthpiece thing. <laughs> And the looks I get when I am on the streets of Manhattan riding my boosted board looking like this, they are priceless. So Casey, thank you for uh, donating one of your helmets to me. This is by far the dopest helmet I've ever owned. Ruroc, Ruroc, I think that's how you say it. Y'all make some dope helmets. Thanks. Once you're done with the edit and you're ready to export, go ahead and type Command M on your keyboard and this will bring up the export settings. I export in H.264 and don't worry about the preset. Go ahead and click use maximum render quality and that will give you a custom preset. And then click on export and you're done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching today's video. If you're interested in the helmet or the goggles, links will be in the description. Give the video a big ol' thumbs up if you learned something. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel to become part of the wonderful community we're growing here on YouTube. And that's it. I'll catch you in the next one.